Hello people, it's been a while since I made a video. Uh, I think it was Grand Canaria, so that had been end of March, beginning of April. Made a few videos, uh, me and my mates. We uh, took a trip to Grand Canaria and uh, spent four days riding out there. Absolutely superb, we had a really good time. But today, this video is going to be a review of the Orbe again that I brought last year. I've had it nearly a year. Um, I've ridden it on the road with road tyres. I've ridden it off the road now with off-road tyres. And I want to give my opinion on what I think about the bike. Am I happy with the bike? So let's get going. So I've just uh, switched camera around. This is my 2018 Orbe again. I ordered it in April last year and I got it about August. I'll just quickly show you where I am. Just out on the ride, on the trails. It's a bit cloudy today, we've got some rain coming later, but it's warm and uh, hardly any wind. So what do I think about this bike? Well, um, I've never ridden an electric bike except for this one and I really like it. It's not super duper powerful, but they do tout it as a bike that's there to help you not take over your ride and it certainly does do that. It does help you and it doesn't just shoot you up the hills like crazy. Um, it just gives you that bit of assistance. I brought the cheapest model, so mine comes with a Claris group set, um, Shimano cable disc brakes. And it weighs without water bottles etc on it, but with the pedals and the water bottle holders, it weighs about 15 kilograms. Um, now, at the minute today, I've been riding it in Eco, and I would say that when you're riding this bike in Eco, you basically, when you ride the Orbe Air in Eco, to me it feels more like a road bike, but with the weight of the e-bike system and the heavy tyres I've got on it um, but it does help you on the hills in eco mode you can go a lot further without feeling absolutely exhausted if I was on my other cyclocross bike I would get worn out I can go further on this without it absolutely wiping me out in eco mode so it's obviously helping more than it feels but I wouldn't say I can feel it shoving me up the hills um, you can feel it helping you pull away um, and I've ridden it in eco on the road and it flies up the hills on the road with road tyres on in eco compared to uh, like big big hills in the Peak District with, when I went out with my friends it would it would drop them it, it was powerful enough to pull away eventually however the big thing is when you turn it to regular mode when you turn the Orbea to regular mode um, it's powerful enough to so you know you're on an e-bike it is pushing you up them hills it's pushing you along up to its speed limit it's giving you plenty of assistance you still if you want to go fast you still have to work hard to you have to put some effort in but you can have easy days which I regularly do I think today I'm going to take it easy and I'm just going to go for a steady ride 20 30 miles whatever leave it in regular mode it helps me get round I can put in some effort if I want to but I can ride as steady as I want um, turbo mode a bit more power I'd say it's hard to differentiate between normal and turbo mode there's a slight bit more power but I I don't seem to notice it that much so I don't really use that mode I just use uh, eco and normal as for distance um, if you are a pretty decent rider and you can put out a reasonable amount of power like me this is basically I can go off or I can go I can, run, yeah, I can do multi-day rides in the mountains I can uh, do 100 milers um, although I do have one issue which is why I brought the Orbea one of the reasons why I brought the Orbea um, so I'm a pretty fit rider and I can get in, with the setup I've got now with the off-road tyres, off-road, 
I could get 60 mile out of Eco and 40 maybe more out of regular. I've never ran the battery flat yet so I don't know for sure the exact mileage and it's obviously going to alter depending on the ground conditions and the, and the weather. On the road with the road tyres I have done over 60 mile on it and uh, still had plenty of battery left with a mixture of eco and regular mode so obviously on the road with them thinner tyres it's way more um, uses way less power because it's more efficient the reason I got the bike um, was it was my 40th I felt like um, getting something special to celebrate it and I thought sad it I fancy an e-bike and I seen these Orbeas were coming out they look really nice to me they look more or less not like a normal bike and I thought sorry I'm gonna have one of them and I do have some problems with my knee so when we went Grand Canaria my knee was hurting a little bit and um, I uh, I went on a hundred mile ride afterwards to Lincoln with my mate and for, since then I've had a bit of knee issues and this bike really helps out so anybody who's got any sort of anybody who's got any sort of problem that like restricts them from going out when they want to like sometimes if my knee's hurting if I didn't have this bike I probably won't go out but with this bike it's like well I'll go out I'll put it in regular mode it'll help me and I can put in as much effort when I want when my knee's not hurting too much so it's really good for that I love it um, and it's off-road it's superb um, I can understand why mountain bikers love e-bikes well majority of mountain bikers love e-bikes because it just makes so much sense it takes all that drag out of the out of the track that you're riding along and just makes it such a nice thing to do so in, you can enjoy it now I have had a few issues with the bike uh, one of them was uh, the front derailleur let me just show you the front derailleur broke right there only about after a month of having it that was replaced on warranty maybe it was just a defective part who knows but the biggest issue I've had is the back wheel the back wheel kept breaking spokes um, I had the spoke replaced and then it broke another one and I just thought Do you know what I ain't messing about and I took the wheel to a local bike shop that I've been to before and I had the wheel rebuilt with uh, DT Swiss spokes, stainless um, nipples. Since then I haven't had any problems, hopefully that will continue to be the case. The front wheel has been left as standard, I haven't had any issues with the front wheel but this as you can see just uh, straight aluminium spokes with aluminium nipples. This front wheel is holding up okay, but the back wheel just just broke them broke them spokes. So I in, instead of going back for a warranty, having a spoke replaced and a spoke replaced, I just thought right, do you know what? I'm gonna have it rebuilt. It cost me eighty, just over eighty pounds, but since then it's been okay. So would I buy this bike again? That's a good question. Would I buy the Orbeer again? Because since I have brought this Orbea. There have been other e-bikes come out on the market that have the Fazuza system in where you can remove the battery and the motor and it's crank drive. And it's still they still look like normal bikes more or less. You can tell the down tube's a bit bigger, but they do look reasonable. And I think that with a crank based system, um you probably helps you on the steeper hills a bit more because this bike can get bogged down on really steep hills. If you go up a steep incline and you start slowing down, the motor will get bogged down and it won't, you feel like it isn't helping you much. But as soon as you start at the, in, the steepness levels off, you can feel the motor get going and away you go. Whereas I, I believe with a crank based system, that doesn't happen so much. You can shift down the gears and keep that motor spinning and it keeps assisting you. And the other benefit of that is if you did have any problems with wheels or whatever, you can put whatever you want on. You could have two sets of wheels with a crank-based system. You could have some road tyres and some gravel tyres if you had a bike like the Orbe again, which is a all-road bike. You can ride it on off-road. So, yeah, so I think in today's market, if I was to buy another one, I probably would look at a crank-based version. However, that's not saying that there's nothing wrong 
that that the oil bear is no good it is it's a really nice bike and i will be keeping it for as indefinitely i will be keeping it so uh, that's my review if you're looking for a hub based motorbike uh, hub based motor on a on an e-bike that doesn't look too obtrusive doesn't have a massive huge down tube um the oil bear, oil bear gain is really nice and now they do carbon versions which are a lot lighter so that probably makes the road riding experience far far superior to the road riding experience of this particular bike because this one is quite heavy so when you're going without with your mates or on your own even and you get to them slight long inclines up the road it's and you're just going about 16 mile an hour and the motor's not working it's hard work so you end up either working really hard or just slowing down to let the motor kick in so right that's it i'm going to continue with my ride out in this lovely countryside in england um see you next time thanks for watching